Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining uh, Amaze's first virtual conference, uh, something that we intentionally uh, include in all of our Amaze work is young people. Uh, you know, who better than to get feedback on our videos and our curriculum and our guide and really the future of sex education than young people themselves. And so I'm so, so excited to have four wonderful, Amaze Youth Ambassadors with me here today. And maybe just for a little introductions, we can each go around, share your name, uh, your pronouns, your age, the state you're in, and one value that you look for in classrooms. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Lincoln Mundy. I'm the Associate Director of Strategic Projects at Advocates for Youth and one uh, of the team members behind Amaze. I would say definitely educators who are kind of always opening up young people's possibilities. Hi, my name is Vivian Wong. I use she, her pronouns. I'm 16 and I live in Cary, North Carolina. The value that I look for in an educator is just them being genuine. I really appreciate when they care about their students and that reflects in their teaching and reflects in how they support you not only in the classroom but also outside. My name is Malik. I my the pronouns that I use is he, his, him, and him. Uh, I am 10 years old and I live in New York City. Hello, my name is Carla Cruz. Um, I go by she, her, hers pronouns. I am from Texas. I'm 16. <laughs> Don't I see you? Um, a value that I've looked for an educator but couldn't necessarily find, at least until now, is um, individuality so like separating who a person once a student once was or like um like just limiting those expectations and those assumptions of students and just like starting brand new and directing your focus on the now hi my name is jasmine langomas i'm 16 years old and i currently live in new jersey a value that i look for in an educator um i actually like really like my choir director he's a very nice person and i feel like what makes him that way is that he's honest with his students and very open we're super pumped to talk with our amaze youth ambassadors to figure out what sex ed young people are looking for asking for um demanding i guess my question to you is just to get started for people to learn more about the ambassador program what made you apply to become an amaze youth ambassador and what kind of like what do you hope to get out of it um, the reason I applied is because I feel like people, a lot of people my age and younger or older are unaware of a lot of things. My mom believes that tampon equals lost of virginity, which is not true. And I feel like misconcept, <laughs> yeah, Malik. I feel like misconceptions like that really irk me. So I really want to get this knowledge out there for people to learn. You'll be sharing amazing videos with your mom, right, Jasmine? Yes, sir. <laughs> I really like what Jasmine said. The real reason why I came to to be your main ambassador is just it's just to bring more awareness, just like um what Jasmine said. Um, I applied to be a youth amaze ambassador because I've grown up in a really open household, a household of discussion, and I've always been um welcome to ask questions and if my parents didn't know they would find me resources that could answer those questions and um but then going into the school system and seeing my friends and my peers i noticed a severe lack of knowledge and a stigma around sexual health and i just want to help um destigmatize the discussion around uh sexual health and also provide um, accurate and inclusive um, education about sexual health. Raise your hand if you would say that you got accurate, inclusive, comprehensive sex ed. I feel like that is a good gauge, right? I mean, I am from the same state that Carla is from Texas, and uh, Texas hasn't updated our state sex ed curriculum since the year I was born, which is 1994. So students like Carla in Texas are still being educated by this very outdated and not really relevant information. And so from you all's perspective, I want to figure out how we get 
to you receiving the actual inclusive, accurate sex ed, right? Like, what are some of the topics that you want included? How do you want your sex ed to change? And if I could start with Carla first. So one of the main things, like you said, in Texas, it's like very limited and it's like, you're either, you can, you can, it can even be like erased from the curriculum and just like, as long as they like touched on it just a little bit, that's like acceptable in Texas. So I know for my own sex education, it was like, you can have sex and you can have, there's condoms and then that's, that's basically it. They limit our knowledge and to be more inclusive, we can have like, um, like um, Vivian said, more um, transparent, I think she's a transparent and like inclusive sex education. Like, um, I want to know how sex works intimately, like the mental toll it, help, it um, has on certain individuals who are not ready for that kind of um, connection. I want to know um, when you're with a partner, like what is it you have to say and you don't have to say and how do you like establish those boundaries? I want to know um, just the basics, like human decency in sex that we're not taught in sex education currently right now. Where do you think young people are going for information like this? Like, so say that Carla did not know about a maze or if you all did not, didn't know about a maze, where are your friends going for their answers or their questions around their bodies or sex and things like that? I feel like people are going to like their significant others or people who have been in past relationships and they're going on this person's like what they think that sex education is and i feel like because of what they think and it's not actually true they're getting false information and stuff like that is being spread i want more reliability on the internet because i know that we can get so much information from it but i feel like that's the main problem because we have so much false accusations in, and so rumors harsh. being tossed around on the internet so I feel like it should be more reliable to use because that's what's being used every single day. Thinking of these educators that are watching this video right now, maybe you're live chatting with them. What type of advice would you give to them to, in order to kind of have a comfortable environment, whether that's online or in person? Like, just be honest about what you're saying. You don't have to be sure about anything that you're saying. Just make sure that it's a good it's a good piece of advice. It's honest from you knowing what you're talking about and roll with it. So, yeah. I would say be very open and inclusive, especially um, I find a lot of sexual education, if it's even present, it's very heteronormative. And so if you have those students in your classroom that are maybe questioning their sexual orientation or anything like that, um, you need to be very open and not biased or say anything that could potentially hurt them or make them feel like they don't belong in this discussion or in this classroom. Like as Vivian said, um, the inclusivity, like um, that same energy put into like heteronormative and like binary um, sex education needs to be put in a non-binary and like transgender education, sex education, because it like we exist and we want to know about our own bodies. We want to know how sex will work for us, how sex impacts us. I feel like the world should be built up more in love and not in hatred and opinions that can be stereotyped or um, all these other things. It should just be built up more in love. That's a wrap. Y'all are great. Bye. Bye.